Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Julia Hayes. I'm one of the associate pastors here, and it is my joy to welcome you to this service of worship at The Vine, an online campus of Wrightsville United Methodist Church. Today is a special day here at Wrightsville because we are celebrating joining together with Oleander United Methodist Church in a merger. I hope that you sense the presence of God today as you worship and sense the fact that we have now become a new thing through God's power. I invite you now to take a big, deep breath and let's prepare our hearts for worship. I'm Pastor David Haley, one of the associate pastors here at Wrightsville United Methodist Church. And as part of our celebration today of the merger of Oleander United Methodist Church with the Wrightsville United Methodist Church, in place of the opening prayer, uh, we have today a litany, um, which is a, a sort of a back and forth between pastor and, and people. The words will be on the screen, and I invite you to join with me at the appropriately indicated parts. The scriptures teach us that the church is the household of God, the body of which Christ is the head. And that is the design of the gospel to bring together all who are in Christ. We have come together today to join two churches into one, which is part of Christ's holy church. Let us dedicate ourselves to that purpose. Let us pray. Lord God, preserve your church. Let your word be heard and your sacraments lived out among this people so that we may live in harmony with you and with one another. May we be confirmed anew in faith and be your brave witnesses and workers in the world. Amen. Almighty God, upon your Son, Jesus Christ, you built your church. Bless this, your congregation. Watch over its people, increase its ministry and mission, and sustain it to the end. Through Jesus Christ, our foundation. Amen. Let's 
I'm Pastor Julia Hayes. I'm one of the associate pastors here, and it's my joy to get to lead us in prayer today. Will you join me now in prayer? God of life, we thank you for gathering us together in your name today. We thank you that your Holy Spirit is among us and working within us. We thank you that through the resurrection of Jesus, you have delivered us from slavery to sin and death. And now we can live free from fear. God, we thank you for the resurrection witness of Oleander United Methodist Church. They have proved their faith in the words of Jesus, who said that whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for Jesus' sake will find it. God, help us also to believe your words and to follow where you call us. God, we believe that you are still in the business of raising dead things to life. Thank you for the promise given to us in Romans that the same spirit who raised Jesus from the dead is at work in us. We bring you now our prayers for this world that is in need of resurrection. We pray especially for our community at Wrightsville Beach and Wilmington, for nations and peoples in strife, for the poor and victims of injustice, for the sick and the dying, and for all those that we name before you now, either out loud or in our hearts. God, we thank you that through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, you have given us a hope and a future. We praise you for your great love. And we ask all these things in the name of the risen Jesus, who is still teaching us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we move now into a time of reflection and generosity, I'd just like to remind you that you can always give gifts to support the ministries of Wrightsville United Methodist Church through the mail, our website, wrightsvilleumc.org, and our smartphone app. Let us now continue to worship God. Hi, Wrightsville kids. I'm Pastor Julia. Today, I want to tell you a story about something that happened when I was in elementary school. When I was in first grade, I loved my class. I really liked my teachers, and I had a best friend in my class whose name was Heidi, and we loved to play together. But then, in between first and second grade, I found out that in second grade, I was going to be moved to a different class. I was going to have a different teacher, and I wasn't going to be in the same class as Heidi. I was so sad and so scared, and I cried and cried and cried. Well, it just so happens that at the same time that I found that out, my aunt was staying at my house. And she knew that I was feeling sad and scared, and so she taught me a great song that goes like this. Make new friends, but keep the old. One is silver and the other gold. Well, I loved that song so much, and I sang it to myself the whole way to my first day of second grade. And you know what? Second grade turned out to be awesome. I liked my new teacher and my new class, and I even met a new really good friend named Raina, who I'm still friends with today. I was still sad about missing my old class and my friend Heidi, but we still got to play at recess, and now I had new friends. 
You know, today we have some new friends who are joining us at church. They used to go to a church that was called Oleander, but now they come to church here at Wrightsville. I wonder if maybe they feel a little bit like I felt when I had to change classes. Maybe a little sad and a little scared. I bet though that we can all be new good friends together. And you know what the best part is? Sometimes things change and we might feel sad and we might feel scared about it, but God is always with us and God never changes and God loves us. So no matter if we have to go to a new class or if we have to go to a different church or if we need to say goodbye to old friends or make new friends, God is always with us, and that is really good news. Let's say a prayer together. God, thank you for friends, and even more, thank you for your big love that never changes. We love you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. My name is Doug Lane and I'm senior pastor at Wrightsville United Methodist Church. And today we're celebrating the merger of Wrightsville and Oleander United Methodist Churches into one church. And it's a really interesting story that has been assigned by the, the Revised Common Lectionary for today. We're going to be looking at an Easter story where Jesus meets two people on the road to Emmaus and, um, and see what that might say to two churches uh, merging into one. So we're going to pick up in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, beginning in verse 13. It's, it's a little bit of a longer story, so uh, hang on there. Um, but I think it's, it's really, really interesting. On that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place here these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it's now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself and all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it's almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them, and when he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were open, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he's appeared to Simon. Then they told him what had happened on the road and how he'd been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Almighty and everlasting God, when we walk with another or even when we are by ourselves, we ask you to come alongside us. And we ask you to come alongside us now and that you would open the scriptures to us and open our hearts that we might receive your spirit. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, this past week I traveled with 11 other pilgrims from Wrightsville United Methodist Church 
along the Camino de Santiago, or the Way of St. James in Spain. It's an ancient pilgrimage that people have walked for more than a thousand years to go to the church where St. James is buried. And along the way, you meet other pilgrims who are doing the very same thing. They come from all over the world and have very interesting stories and reasons for walking the Camino. The reason people walk instead of drive is to connect with the people who've come before them who also walked these very same steps. Of course, for most of human history, walking has been the main mode of transportation, and it still is in much of the world. In America today, we walk for exercise, but we rarely walk far to go to any particular place. Instead, we look for the closest parking space to the store or restaurant so we don't have to walk for very long. But in our scripture passage for today, I want to take us back to a time when people walked just to get from one town to another. It was a seven-mile walk from Jerusalem to Emmaus. Two men were walking along the road toward Emmaus, and somewhere along the way, a third person joined them. The new arrival noticed the downcast looks and hopelessness shrouding the other two. The third person did not seem to know what everyone else knew. Although he, too, had been in Jerusalem, he did not act as if he had heard. He did not let on like he knew the shouts of the mob or the sounds of the lash or the clangs of the hammer against metal spikes. On the trip, the two recounted their memories of the past week in Jerusalem. They told their traveling companion everything they could remember. They spoke of the crowds and the acclamations just the week before. They told of Jesus' teaching in the temple, the conflict with the Pharisees, the trials, the beatings, the crucifixion, and the burial. All these things were remembered and presented. Then the traveler spoke up and told them about some other memories, a shared history that all Israelites had in common. He spoke about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He related stories of Saul, David, and Solomon. He disclosed memories of Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel. He spoke of achievement and disappointment, banishment and renewal, faith, fear, and doubt. As a third traveler explained and remembered, the other two started remembering what they had not yet forgotten. As they neared the end of their walk, the two residents of Emmaus followed the example of their forefathers offering their house as a refuge. It was too late to go on any further that day, so they offered the hospitality commanded by God through Moses. It was simply a meal and a place to lie down. So they handed the stranger some bread so he could break off a portion. And in that, a miracle happened. As the stranger broke the bread, they remembered who this man actually was. He was the one who had ridden the donkey into the city. He was the one who had been lashed. He was the one who'd been nailed to the cross. In fact, he was the hope of Israel, a hope that a few hours ago seemed crushed with his death. But now this man's alive again. What could this mean for our future, they wondered. I wonder what it might mean for our future, too. What does it mean for two churches walking down a path together? One is called Oleander, the other is called Wrightsville. And as they walk together, a man named Jesus comes into their midst. What does this do to our memories? And what does it do for our future? Well, the text from Luke illustrates how God reveals himself when we remember. The walk to Emmaus of past centuries can be our walk of remembrance. The three travelers remembered the history of their people. They remembered how God had visited them. And their memories became more than memories. It was a new reality, a new experience that was born within them. Were not our hearts burning within us, they said to one another? Think back on a time when you experienced God. It may have been at a birth. It may have even been in the midst of someone's death. Perhaps it was a mountaintop experience, or perhaps it was while gazing out at the ocean. Maybe it was in worship with dozens of other people, or maybe it was alone in prayer. It can have been a new insight that came from reading the Bible. It may have been a better relationship because someone said, I'm sorry, or I love you. Maybe it came through a song. Maybe it came through silence. Try to remember. 
that take place here at church or at Oleander, these moments can change our lives. Maybe a little bit, maybe a lot. Has there ever been a time when you could say, were not our hearts burning within us? Those two travelers on the road to Emmaus had never experienced such a life-changing reality until they walked a little while with Jesus. Suddenly their past was transformed and their present looked toward a future as something completely different. Because remembering is more than just thinking. Remembering is a new reality. Remembering creates something more than what we remembered from the past. Remembering is a reality that reveals the constant truths of our life. Remembering sets us on a journey that doesn't end. It makes our hearts feel warm. We remember the words, He is risen. And in that remembering, a revealing truth comes afresh and anew for us. We experience the power and presence of God because He has come to us. We are made fresh through His resurrection power. The power of God, which brought Jesus Christ out of the bonds of death, brings us too to new life. The power of God in Jesus, who walks beside us even now, brings us to life even now. Yes, I absolutely look forward to our shared future together. But I also want to stop and think about our past. No matter what church you're from, or if you might be visiting today, or watching from anywhere around the world, think about Jesus being among us. He's died for our sins, and He's risen for our sake. Remember, and then renew your faith in the One who has led you through all these years. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. Holy and gracious God, you have been with us in our past. And we know because of that historical record in our own lives and going long before us, that we can look forward to a glorious future. A future of resurrection where death does not have the last word, but that new life springs forth. Lord, give us hope for this journey. Give us faith and courage to face the future unafraid. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our service will continue with Holy Communion. And so we invite you to get a piece of bread and some liquid so that you might consume the elements uh, with us. And so if you don't have those, why don't you hit pause on the video Go ahead and get those things together and come back and join us. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another, praying together. Merciful, Merciful God, God, we, we confess, confess that, that we, we have not loved you with our whole heart. heart. We, we have failed to be an obedient church. church. We have, have not done, done your will. will. We, we have, have broken your law. We, we have rebelled, rebelled against, against your love. We, we have, have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive, forgive us, we pray. Free us from joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you to continue to pray in silence. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the, In the name, name of Jesus Christ, Christ you, you are, are forgiven. forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to, to give, give our, our thanks, thanks and praise. praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. This is the body of Christ, broken for us. This is the blood of Christ, shed for us. You're invited now to consume the elements that you have in your home. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you've given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Some of our memories are great memories, and some of them are pretty lousy. But even in the lousy memories, remember who led you through it how you got through it, how you made it to this far. And in that, think about how you're going to go ahead. It is the same God yesterday, today, and tomorrow who led us in the past and will lead us in the future. So go forth in faith, faith trusting in the one who is with you always. Amen.